Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is in this video, I am going to record um, and go over some of the examples that I went through in class. And I'm going to actually uh, go back to the two story problems that we saw, examples five and six. Okay, so I am going to uh, have this video here. And what I want to go through real quick, guys, is to kind of go over some of the concepts of a 45 45 90 degree triangle and a 90 and a 30 60 90 degree triangle so a 45 we'll start with the 45 45 90 first of all remember that a right triangle is any triangle that has a 90 degree angle okay so i am going to try and, and draw a triangle here and the good thing about this is that you guys can go back and if I made any mistake or there was something that you didn't understand in class, um, the good thing is that you can always go back to this and it can help you always refresh your skills. Okay, so a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle is also referred to as an isosceles triangle. And it's referred to as an isosceles triangle because two of the sides are the same. So we'll call this side x, and this is the ratio that you guys need to know. Now, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to try and explain it, um, but it would always uh, come back to this, so it's just easier if you understand that this is just the ratio that is used to work with these kind of exercises. So these two sides are going to be x, and the reason is because they're both across from a 45, 45, and because... This is an isosceles triangle. That means that two of the sides are going to be the same and one is going to be different. And the hypotenuse is just x times the square root of 2. If you go to your textbook, in your textbook, it'll say um, the square root of 2x, but it's the same thing, okay? So don't, don't let that confuse you. Now, I'm going to give you some examples, and then I'm going to go to the one in your textbook. Um, of how you would find these sides. So if I give you a, a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle or an isosceles triangle, and let me try to draw it here. And in this 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, I'm going to give you one of the sides. And you have to come up with the others, okay? So, and these exercises are not... In your book, I actually got them from a YouTube video as a reference. So um, there are a lot of resources that you can use there. Anyway, say this side is 3. The side of this leg is 3. And, of course, this is a 45-degree angle. or an acute angle. If you wanna, we're going to go over angles a little bit later on. And this is another 45 degree angle. So I want to find the value of this leg, which we know is x. And the value of this leg, which we know is x times the square root of 2. Now, uh, the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle has the particularity that one side is actually equal to another. So what that means is that if this side is 3, that means that this one is also going to be equal to 3. So I found one side. Right? Now, I know that the hypotenuse is always going to be given to me by the ratio x times the square root of 2 or the square root of 2x. And what you would do is basically just add the value that I got for x right here. So instead of saying x times the square root of 2, that would now be 3 times the square root of 2. And that's one example. Now let's say we're still working with our 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. I have not gone into anything else yet. What if I give you a triangle, but the hypotenuse, I give you the hypotenuse and you need to find the other legs. Now with a 45, 45, 90, it's really easy because both the short leg and the long leg actually measure the same because they're isosceles triangles, okay? And again, isosceles triangles means that two sides are going to be equal and one is going to be different. So this is a 90-degree angle. 
and we have our 45 degree angle here and you're going to see that this is very repetitive and it's pretty much the same thing over and over again so once you do two or three you know you're you'll kind of get the hang of it okay so let's say i have now the square root of four and or excuse me not the square root of four four excuse me times the square root of two and i want you to find x and i want you to find x or i want you to find the other two sides now if we go back to our ratio over here we know that the hypotenuse is x times the square root of two so in reality what they did or what the problem was giving us is it was giving us the value of x which is four so that means that this side is the is equal to four and since in a 45, 45, 90, the other side is also equal to 4. There you go. Okay? So it's really simple. It's really easy, guys. Okay? So again, they gave us the hypotenuse, which is 4 times the square root of 2. And if we go back to our ratios, we know that the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle is x times the square root of 2, hence... The value of x is 4, meaning that this side is 4, just as well as this one. And I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to go into the example that we were, do, we were discussing in class. And what if I give you the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is now 10. So if I give you the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is now let me see if I can draw a better triangle. Sorry about that, guys. Let me see if I can um, erase that real quick. So, and I know this one specifically caused a little bit of confusion. And the good thing about these videos is that if there was something in class that might have gotten you confused, these videos give you the opportunity to just personalize and, and hear me. And, you know, you can put on some headphones or whatever. So I'm actually trying to see if I can, let's see if I can erase this. Uh, let's see if this will let me erase it or not. Uh, give me one sec. Sorry for the delay. And okay, yeah, this will, this will work. And you go right here. Okay, so let's see if I can go then to the triangle here so i'm gonna try to draw this again one second guys this is of course is live so when you're doing stuff like this live uh, technology will fail so i'm sorry for the inconvenience actually you know what it's just easier if i clear all the drawings and then we'll just start from scratch okay so what if we're still with our 45, 45, 90, but what if, what if I gave you guys the hypotenuse, but without the square root? And I know this one can be a little tricky and a little confusing. Um, we're we're, we're going to see this in two forms like we did in class. We're going to see it one with... Uh, the manual form or without using a calculator, and then we're going to see the one using the calculator. So let's say the hypotenuse is 10. And I want to find out the value of x on both sides. So how do I find the value of x? So what you're going to do is remember your ratios. Always, let me see if I can draw it right here. The ratios for your triangles are... Again, this side is x. This side down here is x as well. And the hypotenuse is x times the square root of 2. So ultimately, what that means, x, right, down here, ultimately, what this means is that Whatever value x is, when I multiply by the square root of 2, it equals 10. So what I'm going to do is actually divide 
10 by the square root of 2. So if I use, if I divide 10 by the square root of 2, that means I have to rationalize my denominator. And rationalize my denominator means I have to multiply everything by the square root of 2. Okay. By the square root of 2. So you're going to multiply 2 times 2, and that's going to be the square root of 4. I mean, again, you can do this process mentally. I'm going to go ahead and write it down just for the benefit of those students that are very visual. So two times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. And of course, you have 10 times the square root of 2, which is just going to stay expressed because there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, 10 times the square root of 2. And... Obviously, the square root of 4 is 2, so that would be 2 in my denominator. And then my numerator, I just pass over the 10 times the square root of 2. Now, one thing that can happen here, or that it, or that's going to happen here, not that it can, is that I can reduce 10 and 2. I can actually reduce that fraction. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, which means that x is actually going to equal... 5 times the square root of 2. And that's going to be the value of x here. Let's see if I can write it down nice and pretty. 5 times the square root of 2. And here as well. 5 times the square root of 2. 2. Okay? And that would be how you would solve that. Now, this is very similar to the example number 5. Now, I'm going to the example in your book. So, if you're watching this video, go make sure you have example number 5, if you have your book, or if you have the PDF files. Um, and I'm going to read the story problem. And the story problem says, um, a house has a roof with a 45 degree pitch. The angle, and, and it goes on to explain that the pitch is the angle the roof uh, makes with a house. It says, if the house is 60 feet wide, what are the lengths of the sides of the roof that form the attic round to the nearest foot? Okay, so 90 degree triangles can be fitted in different ways. So it's sometimes it may not appear like the generic 90 degree triangle that you guys are accustomed to seeing or have seen in your geometry classes prior. And if we're talking about a roof that has a 45 degree pitch, which is kind of like how much the house is, and I'm going to try my best to draw this triangle. So pardon me if it doesn't come out the way I want it to. Anyway, so... um. And of course, this side is 45 degrees, and there's a 45 degree angle here. So it's basically telling us, right, that um, that the width is actually 60 degrees, 60 feet, excuse me. So it's 60 feet, and you're going to round to the nearest foot. So that means we're not going to leave our answer in a decimal, okay? So 60 feet. Now... And, uh -huh. oh boy. <laughs> okay, 60 feet. So, what we're going to do is use the rules. So, I mean, if it's easier and you guys want to do this to help visualize the problem and kind of just want to draw your normal 90 degree triangle on the side and just kind of use that to help you... Uh, visualize you can it's actually I actually recommend it um, so we'll just do this and we'll say that this is 60 and you want to find the value of X and we'll do the same here X okay so and of course, this would be x, if you go back to our story problem, 
and this would be x as well okay so remember this is x and this is x and this of course equals x uh, times the square root of 2 So whatever number x is, when I multiply it by the square root of 2, I get 50. There you go. That looks like a 2. And so that means that whenever I multiply x times whatever number x is times the square root of 2, I'm going to get 60. So how do I find the value of x? Well, in this case, you have to divide. You have to divide 60 by the square root of 2. Now, we could do it like we did in the previous example, or we could do it manually. But in this case, that would be kind of contra, right? It wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't give us the answer that I want. So it would just be kind of like counterproductive is what I'm looking for. It would be counterproductive because you'd have to go through that, and you're not going to get the exact answer. And according to the problem, they want the same answer. So what you're going to do then is just divide 60 over the square root of 2, and if you go to your calculators, that's approximately, and this is the approximate sign, remember that, 42 feet. Okay, so x is approximately 42 feet. Okay, so this is the 45, 45, 90. We're going to go real quick into the 30, 60, 90, and I'm going to discuss example number six. So if you want to go back and pause at this point and go back and go over the 45, 45, 90, especially if you're doing some of the homework, go ahead. Um, if not, I'm going to go erase this and I'm going to go straight into the um, the 60, the 30, 60, 90 degrees. So what is a 30, 60, 90 degree? Well, it's a, it's a right triangle as well. It's just that in this case, all of the sides are different, okay? They're not isosceles they're not equilateral okay so they would be what we call a scalene triangle which means that all sides are are different so now one thing that i want you guys to understand is that in this triangle this is called the long leg and this is called the short leg so in the long leg it's gonna there's gonna be a 30 degree angle okay and Sometimes that long leg could be horizontal or it could be vertical. Now, the short leg is going to have a 60 degree angle next to it. And it's good to understand that because especially when we go into the example, you're going to see how the position of the triangle is going to vary. And it's, it's pretty much going to change um, the perception of it. But we're doing our normal standard triangle and it's good to know that so when you have a 30, 60, 90 um, triangle, the ratio that you use is different than the 45, 45, 90 because the 45, 45, 90 is an isosceles triangle. So this, the short side is going to be X. The longer side, wherever that may be, in this case it's horizontal, is going to be X times the square root of 3. And the hypotenuse, which we're going to see in a minute, is just double x, double the x or two times x or two x if you want it if you want it, it's easier for you to, to say it that way now we're going to see a couple of of problems that i found again i used a, a, another video another youtube video as reference and i strongly suggest that if you have any questions um there are pretty good resources on youtube that you can definitely check out that will help you understand this a little better okay now I'm going to give you guys this example and we're still using our normal um, triangle. So that means that this is going to be the 30 degree and this one right here is going to be the 60 degree. Okay. So um, this is the 60 and I'm writing it outside because I don't have enough space. And this one would be the 30 degree and I'm going to write it down here. 30 degree angle. And of course, we have our 90 degree angle, which is right here. So let's let's look at the problem. Now, what, let's say um, I want you to find the, I give you the value of the shorter leg, which is 4. Okay. And I want you to find this leg, the value of this leg, and I also want you to find the hypotenuse. So again, 
This is x, so I gave you x, and this right here would be x times the square root of 3. So if the value of x is 4, that means that the value of this leg right here is going to be 4 times the square root of 3. And the hypotenuse is 2 times x, which means that if the hypotenuse is 2 times x, all you're going to, and x is 4, all you're going to do is just plug in 4 for the x's. And that's going to be 2 times 4, which equals 8. Okay? So all I did was I gave you 4. And if this long leg is x times the square root of 3, I simply change the value of x to 4, and that would be 4 times the square root of 3. And then the hypotenuse is doubling x, or 2 times x. So I just change the value of x to 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. Now, what if I give you uh, a triangle where I am giving you the longer leg? So I'm going to see if I can do it down here. Now, this would be my longer leg. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see if I can erase it or choose a different color and just kind of give me one second and I can use this. Let's see if I can do that. And yes, I can erase all this or I'm sorry about this, guys. So let's see if I can draw uh, inside that box, and I'll change the color to the color I was using, and let's see. So now we have another triangle, and the longer leg would be this one right here, and this is my hypotenuse. So I'm giving you... So remember, if this down here is a longer leg, that means that this is going to be a 30-degree angle. And this one would be the 60-degree angle. And, of course, this is my 90-degree angle. Okay? So I'm already giving you your long leg, and I'm saying it's 5 times the square root of 3. So if we go back to the ratio... The long leg is x times the square root of 3. The short leg is x. So that means that x is 5. So that means that the short leg is 5. And the hypotenuse is 2 times x. So that means that the hypotenuse, instead of being 2x, is going to be 2 times 5. And 2 times 5 equals 10. So... That would be 10, okay? So that's how you would do it if I gave you the longer leg. But what if I give you the hypotenuse? What if instead of me giving you, um, or, or excuse me, what if I, I changed the value of the ratio? So what if I gave you instead of... Instead of 5 times the square root of x, we're still using the 30, 60, 90. What if, I, and what if I give you, let me see if I can clear and make some space. I think this would be better. So now, in this, we're still doing 30, 60, 90. But what if I gave you a triangle, and assuming that this one right here is the longer leg of the two, Again, if this is the longer leg, that means that this is my 30-degree angle, and this is my 60-degree angle, and this is my 90-degree angle. Okay, well, my 90-degree, a little bit down here. Now, what if, instead of me saying, well, this is the square root of uh, 5 times the square root of 3, I said that this equals 9. And I want you to find the value of x. And I want you to find the hypotenuse, which we'll call y. So what do I do? Well, remember our ratios. This is x. 
This is x times the square root of 3, and this is 2x. So that means that I have to take the 9 and actually divide it by the square root of 3. So divide by the square root of 3. And we're going to rationalize our denominator. So this is the square root of 3. And this is the square root of 3 as well. So obviously, if you multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's going to be the square root of 9. Okay, So the square root of 9 is actually going to equal 3. And this would be 9 times the square root of 3. So this right here would be 3. And the square root of 9 is 3. Again, this step, you don't really have to do it. I'm just kind of doing it to illustrate it. So the square root of 9 is 3. And then you'll have 9 times the square root of 3. Which I can reduce because I can divide 9 by 3. Okay, This 9 and this 3, I divide it. And I'm actually going to write it down here, and that would be 3 times the square root of 3. So that means that x is 3 times the square root of 3. Okay, so right here, this would just be 3 times the square root of 3. And... What I'm going to do next is just find the value of y. Now, remember that y is 2x. So that means that I'm going to multiply 2, or I'm going to do it down here, okay? So instead of writing 2x, I'm actually going to change that to 2 multiplied by 3 times the square root of 3. And then I'm just going to multiply 2 times the square root of 3, which is 6 times the square root of 3. So the value of y right here is actually 6 times the square root of 3. Okay, so you've seen that. Now I'm actually going to go to the example, and that would be the last part of this video. And in your textbook, the example says, and I'm actually in example 6. I'm going to read it to you. If you have your textbook, you can follow along, or you can pause the video right now and just follow along. And I'm looking for it, so give me one minute. And it's right here. Okay, so it says, Before a hurricane strikes, it is wise to stake down trees uh, for additional support during the storm. If the branches allow for the rope to be held, uh, to be tied 15 feet up the tree and a desired angle between the rope and the ground is 60 degrees. How much total rope is needed? How far does the base have to be? Or, excuse me, how far does the base of the tree should be? How far from the base of the, tr of the tree should each of the two stakes be uh, hammered? All right, guys, so pardon the third grade reading level. Um, so the good thing that we need to do here is we need to illustrate. I'm not going to draw a tree, but um, so it's saying that the height of the tree or that the rope is is 15 feet, okay? And that the desired angle between the tree branch and the ground is 60. Now, that is a very important piece of information. Why? Because what that means is that the longer leg 
is not going to be down here like we saw in our previous examples. It means that the longer leg is going to be the height. So this right here is going to be the longer leg, and this is going to be 30. Remember that the longer leg... Wow, let me try to redraw that. I'm sorry. Let me really quick... Um, Give me one sec, guys. So let me see if I can. Draw that a little better. Draw that a little better. Okay. So let me change colors again. And let me get the marker. Okay. So that means that right here, in this area right here, is where the 30 degree angle is going to be. So I wrote it outside, but that's actually the angle that's right here. Now it's 15 feet high. Now what, why is it so important to understand that the longer leg is the height? Well, because like I mentioned in the other examples, the longer leg is always gonna be next to the 30 degree angle and it's going to be across from the 60 degree angle. So I know, going back to my ratios, is that if this is the longer leg, this the longer leg in a 30, 60, 90 equals x times the square root of 3. So that means that I'm actually going to have to divide 15. So what does that represent for the 15? That means that I have to divide 15 by the square root of 3 in order to find the value of x and the hypotenuse. So again, you're gonna use a calculator for this one. We're not gonna do it manually because the problem wants a, an answer and actually wants an answer again rounded to the nearest foot. So we're gonna divide 15 by the square root of three and in your calculators, you guys are gonna do that and 15 divided by the square root of three is actually 8.7, okay? so. We'll say that this is approximately, and again, those little squiggly lines for the approximate sign, is approximately 8.7. So, in order to find the value of, so this side is 8.7, but I'm still not done with the exercise because I need to find the hypotenuse. Now, again, going back to our ratios, which by now you should know that in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, it's actually 2x. So that means you have to multiply 2x times, or 2 times 8.7. And 2 times 8.7, it's going to give you like 17.4 if you use a calculator. But we're rounding it to the nearest foot, so we're going to leave it at 17 feet, okay? So... Again, you multiply 2 times 8.7, which is, um, again, approximately 17 feet, more or less. Okay? So that means that in order for that to work, the ground should be, um, so the desired height should be 8.7 or... Um, should be approximately 8.7. And if you double that up and you multiply that, you multiply two times 8.7, and it's about 17.4, okay? So again, looking at the triangle, okay? The first thing that we did was we solved for x, and we got that this is actually 8.7. And that's what we got for x. And it's to find the length that the rope should be staked. It says approximately 8.7 from the base of the tree. Okay. And the hypotenuse is 17. Now, if you look at your book and you're looking at your book and you're saying, but you know, my book saying that it's my book is saying that it's 34. Well, remember. Um, and let me illustrate that real quick. So 
if you look right now, if you look at your book, your book is probably telling you, oh, but you know, it's saying 34. Why is it saying 34? And why is it not saying 8.7? Well, and again, I'm going to try to illustrate it as best as I can. Let me see if I can actually use some green for the for the tree and some brown or whatever. Um, so you have your tree, right? And now let's see if I can use some brown. And remember that you have to, if you're gonna stake a tree, I don't know if anyone have, has ever done that um, in Puerto Rico when we had Hurricane Maria, I saw a lot of people doing that. So you have to stake a tree on both sides, guys. And let me, let me use a different color to illustrate that. So you have to stake a tree on both sides. Now the tree is 15 feet tall, but you need to stake the tree here. And you also need to stake the tree on this side. So you see? So there's gonna be a 60 degree angle here and a 60 degree angle here. So basically guys, what we did was we solved half of the triangle. So no need to worry if you're like, oh, but why does my book say 34? And why are you getting 17, Mr. Marcus? I'm, I'm confused. Again, it's a tree. And he, when you stake a tree so that the wind doesn't blow it, especially down here in Puerto Rico because of the, the hurricane season, when you stake a tree down, you have to stake it down on both sides. Because if you stake it only on one, the wind will probably blow it away. So what we did was it, the tree is 15 feet, so it's 15 feet on this side and it's 15 feet on this side. And that means that the 8.7 that we got here is actually 8.7 down here. And also 8.7 down here. So that means that... We got 17, right? Because you multiply two times 8.7. So that means we got 17 on this side. And we also have 17 on this side. So how much rope do we need? Well, we need 34 feet of rope because we have to stake the tree down on each side. And that is example number six of your uh, textbooks. This, uh, the material that we discussed today, along with the material that we discussed in our previous classes, is what's coming on your quiz. In the next class, we will have a brief review and we will introduce the next topic. So guys, hope this video is helpful. Stay safe and we'll see each other in our next class. So bye.